crossed. This is the passageway that the astronauts would have used. As you see it retreating uh, there on the left. This is the passageway the astronauts would use in order to get out of the spacecraft uh, in the event anything had happened uh, up to this time. Now, of course, the only way they can get out, get out in the event of uh, some difficulty is to eject, which they can do uh, even at this point. And that would be uh, the least desirable way for them to uh, abort the mission in any way, because, of course, it would be extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Well, four minutes and 27 seconds to go before liftoff, before the start of this historic mission. A mission that has never been flown before. They've never used the solid rocket boosters. They never before have sent a spacecraft into orbit that is going to come down as a plane landing essentially as a glider, a powerless glider. Look at those huge engines getting ready to receive now the millions and millions of pounds of thrust that will uh, catapult this spacecraft and this uh, really strange assemblage off the, uh, off the Earth. We're going to go to Lynn Scher, who was down at the VIP section now, to tell you a little bit more about what to listen for, some of the acronyms that will be used as uh, the launch proceeds. Lynn? Yes, Frank, I am here at the VIP Center and right in the shadow of the VAB. That means I'm with some very important people in the shadow of the Vehicle Assembly Building. And it's easy to use these acronyms around here because sometimes it seems as if NASA is just one giant acronym. For example, here are some of the terms that everyone is going to be hearing in just a few minutes. First of all, there is SRB SEP, and that's when the two solid rocket boosters will fall away. And then you'll hear MECO, which is main engine cutoff, just over eight minutes into the flight. And then there's ETSEP, when the external tank emptied of its liquid fuel is jettisoned. Two acronyms no one here wants to use or wants anyone to hear. RTLS, which is return to launch site, the most dangerous forced landing right here back at Kennedy Space Center. And AOA, abort once around. That's a forced landing after only one orbit around the Earth. But I must tell you, Frank, no one here at the VIP Center is saying anything an acronyms right now. All they're thinking about is the word liftoff. They started to cheer when the clock began again at nine minutes. Everybody here anxiously hoping, waiting, watching. Back to you, Frank. The president's message that uh, Jules mentioned a moment ago said in part, you go forward this morning on a daring enterprise and you carry the hopes and prayers of all Americans with you. And astronaut John Young, the commander of the mission, replied, that's a right fine speech. We sure appreciate it. All right, we have two minutes and 17, 16, 15 seconds to go to launch. Jules and Gene? That's it, Frank. Looks <clears throat> good, huh? That's equipment to go. Yeah. The white, our, white room is back. Uh, the APUs, or auxiliary power units, have started, which power the flight surfaces and controls. And unless something catastrophic goes wrong, it's a go. By the way, everything happening now is being done automatically by computers. They can be overridden. But the only, so many thousands of things are happening all at once, Gene. Well, it's all in the computer checkout. There's too many things uh, for any one man or team of men to do. We're monitoring effectively in the control center the, uh, the computers themselves who are in, in turn monitoring all the systems of the boosters and the spacecraft. I might add that uh, the president's message was a, uh, was a very moving message. And uh, believe me, at this point in time, I can testify by my own personal experience uh, a prayer now and then helps because... Uh, uh, you need all the help you can get on one of these missions. It's emotional but precise. Well, there are plenty of prayers being said right now. Well, and I'll tell you, my, uh, I'm getting a few butterflies uh, sure. myself right now. No matter how many times you watch these things go, boy, you've got to realize well, every what time, it means. Every time's the first time, whether you've been there before or not. And, uh, Godspeed with John and Crip. It's going to be a great one. Godspeed indeed. will be armed just a couple seconds from now. It has been armed. Less than a minute. 45 seconds and counting. That's a blast of cooling water, Frank, uh, that protects the minus 40 heat seconds tiles and counting. The from the blast of the uh, recorders solid on. rocket engines minus 35 seconds. to shield them so they're not knocked away off. From switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 right, seconds. We have gone for redundant set sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15, 14, 13, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
four. We've gone for main engine start. We have. Arcing straight up into the sky. What an unbelievable sight. I didn't think anything could match an Apollo. The trail of the fumes you see is from those solid rocket boosters. Which are going to come off. Houston, you're going problem. About a minute. They're through the maximum uh, maximum aerodynamic pressure now to get back to 100%. They've actually throttled back a little bit to get through the maximum pressure on the vehicle, and now they've gone back to full throttle. And everything looks to be perfectly perfect, perfectly normal American thunder in the skies. Roger, Columbia on the ninth ride. You're lofting a little bit, so you'll probably be slightly high in staging. One minute, 45 seconds, coming up on go, no, go. Columbia, your negative seat. Okay, there. So that call up says uh, that uh, Columbia, the altitude is too high for ejection seat use. Columbia, you're going for SRB step. All right, they're cleared to get rid of the SRBs. Two minutes, four seconds, standing by for SRB step confirmation. And too high to use ejection seats, but not even needing them. There it is. There go. Roger on the step, Columbia. Let's see with the four. Mark, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds. Confirmed solid rocket booster step. Both of them are gone. Now they'll come down. Mark, uh, two minutes, 30 In seconds. Atlantic. All right, on board guidance is converging this program. Columbia is now steering for its precise window in space for main engine cutoff. They're at an altitude Mark, of over 30 seconds. miles Columbia now. Columbia now, 39 nautical miles. miles in altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. Mark, uh, two minutes, uh, 50 seconds. Columbia, yeah. you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Uh -huh. Columbia right. has two-engine rotor. Little fast, little fast. Three minutes. Young and Crip and Rayleigh moving out. Now velocity now reading uh, 6,200 feet per second. And that's over 5,000 miles an hour already, Jules. Mark, uh, three minutes, 15 seconds. Columbia now 51 nautical miles in altitude, 66 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 6,500 feet per second. Mark, uh, three minutes, 30 seconds. Columbia now 55 nautical miles in altitude, 78 nautical miles down range. Mark, uh, three minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, standing by for a return status check and mission control by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia, Governor Green to continue. Everything fine so far. The solid rocket boosters have fallen off. Three minutes, 55 seconds, standing by for a press to Miko, which says Columbia should lose one engine. Columbia, uh, press stand by, press to Miko. Columbia continues flying forward, coming up on the return. Roger, press to Miko. 30 seconds, and if they, uh, they'll, they'll be on their way. Mark, uh, four minutes, eight. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark, negative return. They're not coming back here. Is here is Mark, a view uh, from a uh, chase plane, one of the several chase Five planes that have been that sent out to uh, help track uh, from Capcom. Columbia as it goes. Capcom,